right when I pick out the camera, pick it up, he goes, hey, I know what that means. It's time to go outside. Yeah, I know, I said it. We're going to go, don't worry. Little does he know, I just picked up the camera to clean the lens off. It wasn't time to go out just yet. Things are dusty. Y'all see the dust? So dusty. There we go. That's better, maybe, hopefully. I guess we'll find out. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Okay, bye, pumpkin. Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I'm gonna stop torturing the dog. Need to let him out. We have an agreement. That's part of the training. What do you got to do? You got to sit. There you go. You're free. Good boy. Go outside. Right to the toys. Gotta love it. So, what, November garden tour? Kinda? Traditionally, the last tour of the year is like September, October, and then sometimes in November I say, hey, let's just have a last look at things before things get really chilly out here and there's nothing left to look at. So this is just a last look slash a what survived 19 degrees. Yeah, that happened. We had an unexpected cold snap. It was forecasted to be, it was either 28 or 31. I can't remember. And instead, it got down to 19 degrees. So things are looking kind of sad right now. That's to be expected with 19 degrees. At the end of the world, I was pretty much prepared for it. There are only a couple plants that I still had out here that really should not be out in that kind of cold. I'll show those to you in just a minute, but here's the garden. Here's what things look like this time of year approach that point where it's time to start cutting things back. I usually wait for the tops to brown up and then there's normally just a little bit of green left down low. That's when I go ahead and cut them. So we're just now getting to that point. Oh, and the cage here. This is where I had planted a bunch of daffodils and some alliums, which thank y'all for letting me know that I was not paying attention. I was so into just filming the video that I'm pretty sure I planted the alliums upside down. I went ahead and flipped those, so they're fine now. The sable miners, scrub palmettos, it's nice to actually be able to see them again. <laughs> they were hidden away by the annuals for a while there. They're looking nice. They have some growth on them. Not a lot to report there. I'm going to have to remember to order some enclosures to put over the tops of these. My other sable miners, scrub palms that are down here, uh, last year when it dropped to, I think it was like 14, maybe it was 10 degrees, I popped some just little pop-up greenhouses over them. So I need to get a couple more of those for the other ones, just for those few days where it does get like drastically cold. Even though the sable miners can take the colds, I'd rather they not. Just want to hold on to the nice foliage. I don't want to risk having any dieback. Kind of pricey up north and harder to get a hold of. This area right here, I'm really looking forward to getting cleaned up. All these gingers, these are all Hidichium flaming torches, and then there's an Elizabeth. And uh, there's a Gardenerium back here that I uh, already cut back and pulled up because I don't know how that one would do during the winter time. But this is going to look so, so, so much better when I get all that stuff pulled up, which I'll be doing here in a few days. It is surprisingly beautiful outside. We've had a few of those days, 19 degrees, told you all about that, and then a few nights in the 20s. But right now it's like 61, I believe. And it just it feels absolutely beautiful out. So I haven't gotten around to doing any of the mulching yet. See the mulch? Right there. I haven't done anything with it. That's because just up until a few days ago, these bananas, did, they looked pretty good. <laughs> Clearly not now. I would say it was around 24 to 25 was when they went ahead and said, okay, that's enough. That's when they kicked the bucket. <laughs> that was enough for them. Generally, usually like 28 to 30 is when I start to see damage on the Baju bananas and then you have a few nights of that and yeah, it does them in. Same thing with the Bikini Teeny Colocasias. Exact same deals with the bananas. I just let the frost kill them down. They're down now. I don't really mulch any of those, like at least not with any intent. Some get mulched if they're within the vicinity of the bananas, but otherwise I just leave them be. I am going to come in and cut them back though. Toby, my older dog, who's inside sleeping right now, he has decided that he really enjoys chewing on these rotten elephant ears. 11 years and he's just now decided that those are scrumptious and that's not good for him. It can make them sick. So I am going to come out here and get those cut up even though I usually just kind of let them die down to the ground. They can stay there for right now. I had to put a cage over the daffodils over here too because I used that Espoma mix. Remember if you watch that video I had the hole here with all those daffodils and then I just filled it up with leftover Espoma mix. And I have mentioned before when I use Espoma potting mixes that, or just their any type of soil amendment, biotone starter, anything, the dogs go nuts for it. And that's the only time Toby digs. 
and I forgot about that. He was immediately on top of that. Didn't dig up any bulbs, almost, but not quite, which is something to watch out for, right? Because daffodils, they're not good for the dogs. I caught him before he got to that point, he was just kind of wandering around and munching at the soil. By the time I caught him, he had just gotten down to the level of where the bulbs were, he and Turbo. He was teaching Turbo bad things, to do bad stuff out here, but I got on top of it, put some more mulch on top of it, have that leftover puppy gate, so threw that there so they can't do any damage to those, at least, well, I mean, they probably could. If they really wanted to, they could push through that, but it's been like a week, and so far they've just left it alone, so that's good. I wanted to give an better update on these sable miners, these scrub pumps here, because as I mentioned with the other ones, they were kind of hidden away by the annuals and all of their growth throughout the year, but I think that that would probably be better to do when I get this cleaned out, get all this stuff cut up. But you can see from the front right here, good amount of growth. As soon as they just got planted last year, they're looking pretty good. Haven't done much with them. Pretty simple plants, stick them in the ground. Nice, organically rich, well-drained soil in a protected location, and they just grow. You don't have to do a lot with them. So not right now, but sometime in the next, I would say, I don't know, two to three weeks. We have a warm front moving through. It's supposed to stay fairly toasty here for the next, like, 14 days at the least. So I don't need to cut the bananas back and mulch them just yet, though it would probably look better. I just don't want to mulch them up and then have days in the 60s and 70s where it's going to warm things up and that pile of mulch getting warm and then pushing them back into active growth. Eh, I'll just wait. No big deal. Sometime around, I would say, mid-December. Probably December 10th to December 15th, somewhere in there, depending on the weather. You know, it bounces all over the place. Sometime around there, he Turbo found a stick. Uh, you're not supposed to be there. Yeah, you know that. So I'll cut the bananas to about probably two feet of pseudo stem. That's what the trunks are called on the banana trees and then pile the mulch up around them. And that's it. We'll see him again in the springtime. So over here, yeah, things aren't looking too good, are they? This is where the alocasias, well, I was gonna say were. They're still here because, well, didn't know that that cold was gonna happen. So the damage was done. So I was like, well, there's really no rush to bring them in now. There's still some green on them though. The bases are still nice and firm. And I generally, I cut these back anyways, dig them up and just dry store them in a cool dark place during the winter time. Really the weather just came through and did the pruning part for me. Although it's a lot easier to prune off foliage that isn't all mushy and gushy. And at the end of the world, they'll be okay. I'll probably be digging those up around the same time I mulch those bananas. The ground's still nice and toasty, so not really in a rush with that. Same thing with the cannas. Ground's not cold yet, and we're having this warm front that's moving through. So I was gonna cut them back just, you know, because of aesthetics. Like they look kind of junky, but I also don't want to forget where they are. So I may come through and just cut them to a point leaving like, I don't know, a four to six inch nub above the ground. That way I'll remember where they are, then lift those, take those inside. Do the same thing with them as I do with the alocasias, just put them someplace dry, cool, and dark. They'll come back. Replant in the spring. I still have a mangave down here that I need to lift. Untouched, 19 degrees. Didn't care. Agave over here. This is a perii, 19 degrees. I don't care about that. It's fine. All of the Zingiber myogas that I planted down here, they finally died back. The 19 degrees that we had, they still oddly looked kind of okay. But then a few days later, they went and desiccated away and browned up. So those are going to get a good heavy mulching because they were planted late in the year. It's important to make sure that those rhizomes, the underdeveloped rhizomes, are very well protected throughout their first winter. They're good in zone six. So uh, in theory, once they've established themselves, you don't really have to do much to protect them. But I usually do. Just to be safe, it's so easy to throw a little bit of mulch on top of them. Remember to watch my step over here. Things are a little bit wet. The sprinklers, not the sprinklers, the drip irrigation is still running because... Well, the plants still need water. So just not as much, but I do still have them on. Still have a queen palm out here. Not looking super hot, but it never really did. That's why it's still out here. It's not one of my favorite plants that I have. So there it is. The Washingtonia, it's not sitting in the greenhouse. So uh, when the uh, wind's moving my tripod around, when the uh, time comes, if we're going to have an extended cold or some sort of wet freezing precipitation, <laughs> I'm going to try my best to get some ropes around it, pull it down, and wrap it up. I don't really see that working, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best. It's pushing probably about 32, 33 feet tall right now. Yeah, this is why Washingtonias and Queen Palms have them right here together, so we can talk about this. Not good plants if you need to be able to move them inside. They're okay for a few years, but they grow big and they grow fast. This Washingtonia that was just put in the ground in the springtime, and at the time they're like, oh yeah, that'll fit in the greenhouse. But a uh, full bag of palm gain and biotone starter and drip irrigation. And then a few months later, it, nope, definitely not gonna fit anymore. They will put on lots and lots of growth in a small amount of time. Laurels, look at them, love them. Not much to say, the evergreens, they're just 
hanging in, don't do anything with them during the winter time. You're just chilling. Having a puntia here that I would not normally leave out at 19 degrees. Not this one. This is, I don't know the variety of this, but the majority of the spineless apuntias, not super cold hardy, at least not in zone six, but not to 19 degrees. But it's been about a week since we had that cold and it's still looking okay. So that's a nice surprise, but it's definitely, it's going to go inside. I'm not going to let that happen to it again. Got some evergreens over here and then the hookahs, which are, you know, semi evergreen, all covered in leaves. I haven't decided what I'm going to do about the leaves this year because it's not so bad for the soil to go ahead and leave them, but I just hate looking at them. That and the oak and maple leaves tend to not break down as quickly and they can get kind of mushy, like a wet newspapery texture to them. So I don't know, I'm not gonna leave the ones on the patio. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, but all the ones that are out there in the lawn, it looks pretty. And I think it'd be good for the soil to go ahead and just let them do their thing this year. But I don't know, I'm gonna think about that one. Boxwood bonsais. <laughs> there they are. Sorry, I'm laughing because the dog just came over and decided to randomly attack the tripod and run away. Once we're going to have consistent cold, I take those and I set them down low down here on the ground. And I usually have a frost cloth that I'll drape over a small spot here to protect things like those boxwoods. That's probably where this one will end up too. Love that shrub. So there it is. There's the garden. There's the last look for the yard. I'm sure we'll be back out here for sure when I'm cutting things down and everything, but the last of the garden tours, because I mean, look, there's not much to see. Oh, needle palm. This needle palm right here did a lot of growing this year. I've had this one for years, like, I don't know, eight to 10 years, and it's just been a little nub, just a scrawny little thing. And this year it finally decided to go ahead and start putting on some nice growth and it's even starting to put out some mature leaves. It's had, look at this. I mean, it's probably, I'd say maybe about 30 inches high and it still has some immature leaves on it. I mean, come on now. These things, they grow so slow. It's worth it in the long run because they're such beautiful plants when they mature, but man, they take a lot of patience. It's like the ones over there. Aren't they beautiful? 19 degrees isn't going to hurt the needle bombs. They don't care about that. Have another banana needs to be cut down. So here are plants that got left out that I would, I think pretty much everything that's over here leave out when it's 19 degrees, pardon the harsh shadows, not a cloud in the sky, lots of harsh lines. But anyways, the windmill palms, they're fine. The fatsias that are down here though, that morning when I woke up and saw on my phone that it was 19 degrees, I panicked, ran to the door. And the only thing that looked like it had really suffered were the fatsias. They were like all completely collapsed down. Their leaves looked horrible. Then come afternoon, it warmed up a little bit and they put their leaves right back up, which isn't terribly surprising. I leave them out for a good chunk of the year. The new Chefleura that's down here, Chefleura, Chefleura, call it what you want. Looks all right. This one I believe was called Winged Phoenix. I think it's a sport of the Taiwanensis. Maybe it's tag disappeared. I'm sure I have it around here somewhere, but I thought that I had stapled it to the, oh, look at that. Yeah, Winged Phoenix. And yes, it was pricey. This I would have left out anyways, because I got this so I could test its hardiness and well, Seems pretty good to me. Didn't really seem very affected. All the plants are a little bit thirsty right now, at least the ones that aren't on drip. This one's not on drip because it's been very, very, very windy here and very dry. Everything else that's over here, like I'm not really surprised that they look okay. The Recurvifolia yuccas, they don't care. Still some buds on the roses, which you have to take my word for it. This lighting, sorry, it's terrible. The buds are looking pretty sad though. One of the nice things about roses is they usually keep going even when things cool off and they still keep looking good and they'll still keep flowering. Usually for me until like December, depending on the type of fall that we've had. Mule palm, totally fine. This one still needing its repot. Bamboo, no surprise there. They're looking pretty good, but what about the tree fern? What do we think happened here? Yeah, this is not a plant I would normally leave out in that kind of cold. Doesn't look great. However, it's not dead. The Inside, still nice and firm, so just gonna cut the foliage off. And uh, like I said, it's supposed to be fairly warm for the next couple of weeks and no more frost for it this year. I think it's, it's, say it's had enough of that, wouldn't you? The past couple of years, I have left this out to a point where it's pretty much defoliated before I moved it in and then I move it in and it flushes back out. So not too concerned about it, but that's still 19 degrees. I've never had it down that cold before. I do think it'll be okay though. It doesn't look very good, but it should be fine. Petunias. Still looking good. I hope the colocasias that were in here, those Maui golds are okay. I would typically have lifted those and brought them inside, but again, 
the forecast, it either said 28 or 31. So we had two different nights where the forecast was way off. And I use three different apps and pay attention to the weather on TV. They all just really got it wrong. That's why I tried to get the plants in late October this year, even though the weather, like it looked like it was going to be really cold and I didn't want to risk it. But I also was like, yeah, I feel like they might be wrong. I just wanted to get them inside into the garage because of the potential for the ups and downs and the just being wrong. You know, you can't always get it right. You know, that way all my plants don't end up looking like this one. Oh, okay, this is still, that's still got some firmness in it. So that should be okay. Butia looks fine. No surprise there. There's a euphorbia back here. This is in, where did it go? Ascot rainbow. Looks okay. Gonna take that inside though. Don't wanna leave that out here all winter. Not in a pot anyways. They're good in zone six, but if we have a bad winter, they don't always do so well. Other mule palm, totally fine. 19 degrees and then several nights in the 20s. They're not gonna skip a beat. Same thing with that Yucca Ristrata. Totally fine. I have a Gerber Daisy down here. Gerber, Gerber, Gerbera. However you wanna say it, it's still flushed out. I think I might take that inside and see if it'll flower in the growth space. These I was very surprised by. The San Severias. I just, I hadn't gotten around to bringing them in yet and they're totally fine. Look at them. I mean, they're a little bit tender, but that's also because they're bone dry. I think when I take these inside and water them, they should firm right up. Full nights in the 20s and they're fine. I've actually noticed that a lot of Sansevierias, I know they're Dracaenas now, but I'm just so that we all know what I'm talking about here. I'm going to keep calling them Sansevierias. These are fernwood something or others right here. Those, and then I have some, um, what is it? The Trifasciatas. I believe. I've let those take surprising amounts of cold before and they don't skip a beat. As long as things aren't too wet, that is. Oh, the busy. Would not have left this out at 19 degrees. I know that they can take some cold, but they are so expensive. I got a great deal on this plant, but to replace it would cost a fortune. So uh, it's a plant I would prefer to not expose to those temperatures, but it happened because again, I, I didn't know it was going to get that cold and it's fine. Inner spear. Still nice and firm. Same thing for the one down in the middle. I'm not tugging too hard on them. I don't want to push it. I don't want to stress the plant. plant uh, I don't want to stress the plant out. Getting tongue tied there. It's been about a week since those cold temperatures, and it's okay. Sometimes with palms, it can take like several weeks. Palms and orchids, I've noticed, they can take some cold, and you'll think they're fine, and then like six weeks later, sometimes even a few months later, all of a sudden they just go, Pfft. and then they don't look too hot. That's usually with the smooth trunked palms, like the Adenidia palms and Alexander palms, foxtail palms. Yo, remember I have a foxtail palm, right? Yeah, that was still outside that night. Want to see how that one's looking? It's inside now. This is that smooth trunk I was talking about. Nice, slender, smooth trunk, beautiful green crown shaft, and beautiful foliage. <laughs> nope. Yeah, it's not looking too hot. The foxtail palms are typically, oh, I don't need to talk that loud, it's very echoey in here. Foxtail palms are, at least in my experience, generally just a touch more cold hardy than like an Adenidia palm. Not 19 degrees <laughs> hardy though. That's too much. I generally bring this plant in when we're having consistent nights that are dropping, I'd say, 31 to 28 somewhere in there it's going to drop to like 29 one night but then warm right back up into the 70s and normally i don't worry about it that's never been a problem doing things that way but yeah, this is this is a whole new level i have some pruning to do this is not what this is supposed to look like when a palm tree has damage like this i'll usually go ahead and just give it some time to rest see what's actually happening with the foliage. Cause as I mentioned, it can take a while for them to really show the signs of stress. And I want to preserve as much green as possible on the plant. So I don't want to prune anything off prematurely, but yeah, it's been, like I said, about a week now. So I'd say it's pretty clear to see what the damage is to this. So pretty much all the full, not pretty much, all the foliage is coming off of this one. But there's still hope. It's okay, center spear. I'm gonna try and get as close as I can. Dangling my hand over the railing here. Try and get it to focus with the other hand. See that? There's still some green down in there and it's firm to the touch, but the top of it is damaged. So that growth is going to end up coming up looking probably pretty wonky. And then I'll cut the dead part off. And then the next spear that it puts out may also come out looking kind of weird and kind of wonky, but I would say by the time it gets to its third or fourth spear, it'll start to look normal again. So it's not dead, but it sure does look like it, doesn't it? Oh, and with this, Palm and the Australian tree fern. I 
put just a tiny, tiny amount of copper-based fungicide down into that crown, just a little bit. I don't want to flood it because I don't want things to stay wet in there for very long, just enough to kill off any nasties that might be in there to help prevent crown rot. Because that's essentially what's going to kill this plant is crown rot at this point. So that's the main thing, just lots of fertilizer, lots of love, lots of warmth, and get it to push out new growth as quickly as possible when they start to look like this. What do you have? What is that? Yeah, it'll be okay. Unfortunate, but it'll be all right. I would think by probably midsummer, hopefully won't even notice that anything had even happened to it. Oh, let's throw out the planters on the front porch. The delivery here, got some salt. These are just windmill palms, so they're fine. I don't bring these in until it drops into like the mid-teens. I actually, I have a separate video I'm going to do just on the plants that I leave out for most of the year. I'll talk about the temperatures and how I make my decisions in that video. But these were underplanted. Remember there were the canary wing begonias in here, which it, that, yeah, that's what happened to those. And some sun and patience. So these were two planters that I hadn't gotten around to cleaning out yet because they were holding on. They're on the front porch and things were still fairly protected. So I didn't rush around to doing any of that. What I'm surprised by though is the lobularia. Totally looking fine. I mean, usually those can take an okay amount of cold, but typically by the time we've had a few nights in the mid twenties, they start to fizzle out. 19 degrees and we had another at 20 and I think we had another night at 21 or 22. That looks fine. So there's the one over here. It doesn't look great, but it's still flowering. That's surprising. This is also where the foxtail palm was. The front porch is slightly sheltered. If I had had that palm like over here around that corner, or in the backyard where it would have been more exposed with the height of that plant being so far up from the pavement. So there wouldn't have been any heat radiating up to it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the palm definitely would have been toast. Not that it's looking all that hot as it is right now, but it's not dead. So I'm really happy about that. Oh, there's Toby, hey baby Toby. So nice of you to show up so people can see your face, Toby. And I won't have people asking me if you're okay. There's even still some green on this begonia down in here, way, way, way down in there. So you can tell if that was nice and protected by all that foliage, which was probably really loud through my mic just then. Sorry about that. Nah, I don't get too stressed out over cold damage this time of year, other than when it's because something wasn't forecasted, like with the foxtail palm and the tree fern. But like I said, I think those will be okay. And this is just part of November. And it's fine, it's kind of fun actually. I enjoy the process of cutting the things back and having that blank slate and getting things tidied up and be able to sit back and just have a rest for the winter time. Oh, almost forgot. I still have some hibiscus out here, but they're actually okay. There's still some green in them. So I'm just gonna give them a cut back, move them inside. They'll probably be okay. The hibiscus, even though they defoliate pretty easily, they're fairly root hardy. So these are in pots, so kind of tossing the dice, having them outside when it's that cold. They should be fine though. And that's everything. Last garden tour of the year. I don't know if that really matters. We'll be back out here doing other projects. What's going on in your gardens? Does anybody even do anything in their gardens anymore? I know some of y'all down in the south are just now starting to plant some of the things that we plant in the springtime, like the like the Gerber daisies and the, the I don't know, other things. Y'all always tell me about it and I forgot, but you know, those plants, cyclamens, those sorts of things, things that can't take the heat down there. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.